Now that we know uh, the five basic uh, shapes of molecules, we can talk about the overall polarity of molecules. All right, we already know what a polar bond is. It's when a, uh, electrons are shared between two atoms that have very different electronegativity values. Uh, fluorine's very electronegative, hydrogen's average, and so what happens is that there's a partial negative charge that sets up on the fluorine atom because of the excess electron density there, and of course there's a partial positive charge by the hydrogen because of the lack of electron density. We can also show this uh, polar bond by what's something, something called a dipole moment, where we use a essentially a vector, uh, an arrow, that shows where the electrons are headed or where the electric field is sort of orientated. We draw the arrow always towards the most electronegative atom or the partial negative charge. And the back of the arrow, I always put that little line there to show that it's a plus sign and it's always by the partial positive charge. Okay. So for molecules that just have one bond, it's a very simple question. If it has a polar bond, it's polar. If it doesn't, it's not. When you get to bigger molecules, we also have to take into consideration um, geometry, okay? For instance, let's look at CO2. CO2 is linear. It also has polar bonds. Each carbon atom sharing um, two electrons with each oxygen atom. You get the octet rule. Um, it takes on a linear shape because, of course, that's how far these two electrons can repel each other, 180 degrees. Oxygen is very electronegative. Carbon is uh, or much more electronegative than carbon. And so it does have a dipole moment. The oxygen is pooling uh, for the electrons. So is this oxygen. So what actually happens is that uh, these two dipole moments, you can think of this as a tug of war for the electrons. Each oxygen atom is pooling for the electrons in this carbon atom. Uh, but since each of these atoms have the same electronegativity values, they're both pooling with the same strength, these dipole moments cancel each other out. And so what we say, there's no net dipole moment. And so CO2 is a non-polar molecule. Even though it has dipole moments or, uh, and very electronegative atoms, because of the molecular geometry, it turns out to be non-polar. This is, of course, very different for water molecule. Water molecule is not linear, it is bent because of the two lone pairs. So what happens with water, if we were drew it with a, a little bit of geometry in mind, draw it as bent, there is a dipole moment being set up. Each ox This oxygen is pulling electrons from each hydrogen atom. But they don't cancel each other out. There's actually a net dipole moment towards the oxygen atom. If water was a linear molecule, they would cancel each other out. So there's a partial negative charge by the oxygen and partial positive charges by the hydrogen. So water, of course, is a polar molecule. Now when we talk about intermolecular forces, this will explain why CO2 is a gas at room temperature and water is a liquid, even though carbon dioxide is a bigger molecule. All right. Um, this uh, idea of dipole moments canceling out extends all the way to uh, trigonal planar molecules. So something like BF3, boron can actually uh, be stable with six valence electrons. And so it takes on a trigonal planar uh, molecular geometry. Fluorine is very electronegative. And so it is uh, setting up a dipole moment for the electrons in boron. Almost forgot my lone pairs of electrons. 
But since each of these fluorine atoms is equally spaced 120 degrees apart from each other, the, just like uh, carbon dioxide, these dipole moments cancel each other out. So BF3, even though it has contains uh, three very electronegative atoms, it is nonpolar. Same thing happens uh, in tetrahedral. So let's talk about um, a couple of different molecules. CH4, CCl4, and CH3Cl. CH4 is tetrahedral. So it takes on this geometry, but um, really we didn't even need to think about the geometry. Since methane, carbon, hydrogen bond, there's no polar bonds, there's no bond, there's no dipole moments to set up, and so methane is nonpolar. With carbon tetrachloride, or CCl4, um, we've got four car chlorines uh, bonded to the carbon instead of the hydrogens. Chlorine is very electronegative, so it does set up dipole moments. And just like uh, BF3 and CO2, however, uh, because each of the bonds, the dipole moments are pulling in equal and opposite directions, 109.5 degrees away from each other, these dipole moments also cancel. So, carbon tetrachloride is non-polar. Finally, we've got CH3Cl. We've got one chlorine and three hydrogens. And carbon chlorine bond is polar. So there is a dipole moment towards chlorine. And since there's nothing else, no other dipole moments, carbon hydrogen bond is nonpolar, there's no other dipole moments to cancel this out. And so there is a net dipole moment. So CH3Cl, methyl chloride, methylene chloride, is. Uh, polar. All right. And so um, that's why we needed to talk about geometry when we talk, before we talked about overall molecule polarity. But in terms of, you know, biology, biological chemistry, there are some really important uh, bonds that we need to think about um, in terms of polarity that will help us out on our discussion. We still need to think about uh, geometry, but when you see these bonds, you can immediately know whether or not they're polar or nonpolar. So our polar bonds are between carbon and oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, and hydrogen and nitrogen. These make up a lot of bonds in our body, and so that's why they're sort of important. That's why I'm pointing them out. Very important nonpolar bonds is any hydrocarbon. Carbon hydrogen bonds are always nonpolar. And then uh, the other polar bond that pops up a lot in organic chemistry are carbon bonded to a halogen like chlorine or fluorine. Those are also polar. And so um, whenever you see those bonds in a molecule, you know that there's polar bonds. Then you just need to think about the geometry and whether or not those polar bonds, those dipole moments cancel each other out. Um, if you see a compound with all hydrogen and carbon bonds, you know it's nonpolar no matter what geometry it is.